Hi all. Uh, today in this session we will check few more uh, components. Uh, so today we will check uh, the log and error section, and in that we have uh, T flow and the T flow meter, uh, T flow meter and T flow meter catcher. So we will check how to use T flow and T flow meter catcher. So if you just uh, hover on a T flow meter, you can see uh, that it sends a uh, meter message uh, to T flow meter catcher. So whatever is being caught in this T flow meter, it is being tra transferred to T flow meter catcher. The way the T die and T1 are being the message from T die and T1 are sent to T log catcher. Similarly, whatever things are captured in T flow meter, those are being passed to T flow meter catcher. So what is the use of a T flow meter? So it normally calculates uh, how many records are being flown uh, in a particular flow. It calculates that particular uh, uh, record count. So for this, let's uh, uh, create a job and check how T flow meter works. So first of all, I'll use uh, uh, the row generator. So here I'll be generating few of the records. And I will use the flow. Kilometer, and I'll use the map component. Or even instead of map also I can use the uh, filter uh, row component to filter some data. And I'll use one more uh, uh, T flow meter. Send the data to output. And to cast the result from T flow meter, I will use T flow meter catcher, which will get linked to T log. Okay. So, overall, the job is being uh, prepared. So let's uh, do some modification in T row generated. I will use a first column as a sequence. And I will use it as integer. And I will generate it as sequence. Now I'll have another column like first string and here I already have some function called first name I'll use that and have one more record last name with a string and I already have a predefined uh, uh, function called get last name and use this and uh, basically I will be generating 100 records here Okay. Instead of 100 records, let me pull uh, 10 records. Okay. Now in Tflow meter, first of all, what I'll be using, I'll use, uh, I will check uh, this particular option, use input connection name as level, so that uh, whatever the input connection I'm using, I will just use that particular uh, part. So whatever the name is there in this input connection, I will just use that uh, as a level here. And uh, here I will use the mode as absolute. We have two options, one is absolute and one is relative. So here I'll be using absolute. And then click on plus.
So basically, A is I'm using absolute, so no need of this particular label here. So I can just remove this. I'm using the next section. Then I'll use PMAP. And here I will use, uh, I'll map all the things that are there in the source to the output. And I'll put a filter. Sequencer. Greater than three. So that only those records which has the sequence uh, sequence greater than three that will get passed. And here, what I'll use is uh, here also in TFLOW meter, I will just take this particular offset, use input column name as level. And what I'll do instead of absolute, I'll just use the relative here. And uh, here it will ask me what is the connection list. So which connection list I want to uh, refer here, I will be selecting that. So I'll be using this uh, row one because I want to compare the data that is flowing here with this row one. So there will be a comparison. And in T flow catcher, no need to do anything. It is already a predefined uh, the schema is there. It has PID, moment, uh, uh, parent PID, root PID, the same that we checked uh, in the last session for T log catcher. We have the similar thing here. So now let's run this. Now you can see the output here. So 10 records got generated and uh, here also 10 records got passed. And after TMAP as we had put a filter on uh, sequence greater than uh, three. So only seven records are being passed. So let's check how the result is. To have a good readability, I will change this particular T log row as the table version so that uh, it is easy for me to read that data. Now let me run once again. So you can see, uh, I got the, uh, you can see uh, what is being captured in the uh, flow meter catcher. So that is being put into T log row two. This is what is the moment at which, what particular time this got captured, and what is the uh, PID, root ID, and all those. What is the project? What is the job name for this? This is T flow. This is a job name, and what is the version of the job? What context are we using? We are not using any context, so it is a default one. And here there are two flow meter that we have used in this job. That is flow meter one and flow meter two, flow meter one and flow meter, flow meter one and flow meter four. So you can see we have uh, two flow meter. And uh, this one is uh, uh, the row one. So the level is for row one. T flow meter considers the data for row one and T flow meter four considers the data for output flow. So that is how it is present here. And in T flow meter one, you can see 10 records are flowing. So that's why we are able to see 10 records here. And as we don't have a reference, we had made 
that uh, the function uh, that option is uh, uh, absolute so the reference is null so this is what we have done here in pflow meter 1 we have used absolute so that's why the reference part is showing null because we are calculating the absolute value that is uh, the count is 10 and in pflow meter 4 what exactly we have used we have used the relative and uh, with whom we are comparing with the row 1 so if you see in row 1 we got 10 records and but in output we are getting 7 records so this is what it is showing here output is showing 7 records but the reference that we have used is for uh, uh, row 1 which is 10 records so this is how we will be using the flow meter and the data from the flow meter can be captured in flow meter catcher hope this is session is helpful if it is informative then please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel thank you